All right, everyone. It's a Friday night. It's been a big week, and that means I feel like playing a little bit of Fallout. So here we are back with the Twin Mothers in the Old World Blues mod for Fallout 4. When we left off last time, Lanius's cohort was, as you can see here, eating our nearest neighbour. So now it's just a matter of time until events start triggering and we start being placed under threat. Uh, in the meantime, what we're doing is we're going to work down our focus tree as fast as possible. We're going to research some tech, get make sure that the army is uh, ready to go. We've got everyone trained up to a reasonable level. I trained them more, but I'm getting a trickle of army XP from advisors now, and I don't want to spend the equipment when I need everything I can to put out as many units as possible. Ah, well, here we are. Here we are. All right, Lanius, we'll see you soon. And Ouroboros, which I believe is Hecate. Yes, who is close to us. So maybe she'll come into play if we fight the legions. Let's see. Texas Brotherhood has eaten the cart to the Ginians, so they are expanding. The good old uh, Brotherhood of Steel has gone native and taken over most of Texas. Going well, RRG, who are you with? You're still Dante Guerra, but I don't think you will have had your election focuses yet, so you probably haven't decided on a leader yet. Here we go. All right, let's close out of this. Jeez, everyone's dying. Uh, Old World Blues has so many nations, so many wars, unlike conventional Hut to Bayern 4, where you basically just fight the Second World War in various fields, and that's it. Although you have Spanish Civil and things like that beforehand. In Old World Blues, there are so many conflicts going on, and a lot of nations usually get eaten pretty early on. Eventually, I invited the leader of these raiders, a certain Lanius, to meet me deep within Vault 29. My robotic guardians escorted him and his cohorts to the vault. Then we had a conversation. For one thing, speaking with someone who viewed me with such a quality was a strange sensation. I haven't spoken with anyone like this since I had spoken with Hecate, Reese, or that prisoner from Tibet's prison a few decades ago. Our talk was enjoyable. I got to pick through Lanius' head a bit. Uh, although he is the kind of wasteland sort that seems driven, the winds of change follow the path he walks. I don't know if I will be able to keep him from attacking my children with gifts alone. From here, my children's survival will depend on how I proceed. I could try to shield my children and tell my shamans to give in to their demands, just as they have the scorpion's bites for decades. I could tell our shamans to ready the tribe for war, to try to defend the valley and ensure that others could never steal from our lands again. Or, if I would do that, I could try simply to emulate what Lanius has done here, embolden my children's spirit and work with the bull, rather than against them. So now, we've met a legend, and this unlocks these three options. Tribute for independence, the goddess of war, and upholding our ideals. We're still on Prosperous Village, and we have a whole bunch of areas that I wanted to go through first, but the question is... Do we go for one of these soon? Let's stop and talk about the decision-making here, right? It's all about timing. Until the Twin Mothers... First, first of all, without doing one of these, the Twin Mothers is basically stuck. You're, you're stuck. You're not going anywhere. The reason is you've got this peaceful and prosperous economy, which gives you 40% consumer good factories, halves your construction speed, makes it impossible to justify wars, to join factions. Um, it's just it's just horrible. Um, it's built off the same mechanic the NCR has. Now, in order to change this, you need both 50, more than 50% war support, and which I have, 50% war support, albeit war, which I've got, and you need to be facing an enemy that has at least 20% of your total factories, which means unless someone attacks you, you can't get out of this manually. These factions all get you out of it. They replace this wasteland, this peaceful and prosperous with wasteland economy, which is much better. I mean, it's still got a big malice, and you want to go over things like funding the army which are, and uh, well-equipped army relatively quickly, and we'll look at those at the time. But the key is you gain the ability to justify wars, which you kind of need to do if you're going to be relevant. So you want to pick one of these quickly and then go justify some, and then go justify some wars. But as soon as you pick it, you unlock the ability for uh, Lanius to take the false goddess. Because as you can see here, the requirements, false goddess, Twin Mothers has completed the focus meeting a legend and has completed upholding our ideals. So, if you take the befriend ones, 
you've befriended Lanius. If you take upholding your ideals, from that point onwards, there is an 80-day focus timer that Lanius can take at any time, and there's no way to prevent necessarily the AI from picking that particular tree. It's just luck at that point. So it's a decision for you. Do you do a little more economic development? Do you try and pick up some of these, pick up some genetic information and, and go for it? Or, or do you go for one of these early? And I think that depends on which one you're going to take. I think if you're going to take tribute for independence, you probably do it immediately. There is a cost because you're sending Lani or some tribute, but you get a much better economy. You can go to war. You can be protected. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, the problem is that basically ties you into eventually going goddess of war down here if you want to eventually get um, if you would want to eventually get into your like nation building path down here so there's that if you want to fight Lanius you might want to wait a little longer because you can build up but at the same time Lanius is also building up so for me the best timing is going to be pretty quick I'm going to uh, take that focus, hope that I can grab at least one or two other nations before they build enough troops to fully block these crossings. I want to be able to cross the um, cross the river here, for example. I'm going to keep my troops away from there so they don't know what's going on. Take as much land as possible and go from there. Why? Because there was a vote. We had a vote. Um, some of it was on Discord, some of it was in the, um, the YouTube comments, and... A couple of people said said pay him off. Uh, a couple of people said the goddess of war path, but overwhelmingly the vote was upholding our ideals. Then within upholding our ideals, the vote was split between lose and win. There were more votes for win than for lose. So I've got to try and make a fight of it on the upholding our ideals path. So as much as I would love to do all this gorgeous military and economic development over here, I think what I'm going to do is upholding our ideals and I think I'm going to do upholding our ideals, jump down uh, some of these paths, probably probably these two first, save fight for peace. We'll talk about these later, but I think I'm going to go upholding our ideals, and then once Lanius triggers his war goal, then we change our plans. But I'm hoping I can sneak out one more before that happens. So, once Prosperous Village finishes, um, we're going to change things up a little bit. And I think, as soon as I go to war, I should be able to go over to two-year conscription. I'm saving up the political power. I want at least 300, because I want to jump to um, funded militias, which will give us 8% recruitment. Okay. Let's have a look what ArcJet Schematics does us, and then we'll change our focus. Reward technologies, ArcJack systems. That probably just unlocks events. There we go. So, we've got our arms factories with our processing power. We've got Prosperous Village, which just gave us a lot of political power, which is well-timed. I want to do more development, but... Um, and I'm also scared, right? Like, we've done bugger all development, but I think this is the only way forward. <sighs> no, I will never bow to Lanius. He will burn for what he dare inflict upon his citizens. Slavery, torture, families broken, and bonds destroyed in the fires of treacherous empire seeking power above all. They dare call us profligates. The only profligates I see are them. The very reason the nursery was created in the first place. Prepare our troops. Prepare the factory. We will never yield to the Legion. Whew. All right. I'll be back when something interesting happens. But uh, but we're doing it. Unless I, uh, unless I back off and cancel this, we're using the Lanius focus. I just hope that he goes to war with someone else first because that will affect our war timing. And then once our factory is constructed, I want to get fortifications up on these borders. And then we'll talk about the focuses when the time comes. See you shortly. All right, just a small addition. 
I did decide to go for Thunder Militias first because there's no cost saving in order to do so. Um, there's no cost saving of like saving and doing step one step uh, at a, in one go rather than doing them incrementally. So I've gone with the incremental approach. We should be getting troops mobilizing now. Uh, manpower is not the problem, equipment is, but we'll be able to solve the equipment problem hopefully before the manpower problem um, will become our problem later on. So I appreciate the conscription. So the peaceful, the peaceful tribes of the Twin Mothers that have been settlement protection only for a while, well, um, we're going to fund a regular militia at this point, get some mobilization going, make sure people are ready to fight, because uh, when Lanius comes from it, I suspect we are going to need it. You know, I'm kind of excited you guys chose this path, but at the same time, oof. If we can pull it off, it's going to be amazing, and if we lose, it'll probably be a fun game too. Anyway, let's see what Lanius does. All right, here we are. Uh, I've just finished upholding my ideals. The question now is, do I do more economic development or do I take these two on the right? So these on the right have two purposes. Um, bring supplies to paradise moves half your resources and all of your workshops in your capital to either paradise or off map, like just converts them all to off map factories so that when you lose your capital, all that equipment there is still available to you because it to represent it being moved and concealed in the nursery. Um, it does mean that if I go now and we lose, I'm going to miss the arms workshop that I'm working on now. But I think I want to do it anyway because I want to get down here to assistance from Hecate, which can only be fired when you still have Twin Mothers, and it will give us 1.5 thousand units of infantry equipment and five elite divisions. And I don't think I can sit, like look past that because it will instantly allow me to treble the size of my military and give me a good chance of expanding into someone first. Speaking of which... How long will it take to justify on you guys? 260 days. Is there anyone better than 260 days? I think 260 days is just going to be the go, isn't it? Uh, do I have anyone... I've already got minus 25% war justification. I don't think I can do more. Is there anything... Mmm, I can upgrade this to reduce wartime training even more. And I'm about to have enough for mercenary training instruct instructors. I'm going to do that. I'll come back shortly, I'll do that. And then we'll see uh, how much it's changed my justify time. One sec. Alright, I'm just checking in because we're about to get assistance from Hecate. I just wanted to flag a few things that have happened. The first thing is that uh, the good old Mojave territories have done exactly what they did in New before the start of New Vegas. Uh, they have taken Hidden Valley, the Mojave chapter, and Elijah. They failed. That's actually an interesting playthrough that you can do in this version of the mod, playing as Elijah um, and trying to win against the Mojave territories, against uh, General Lee Oliver's mission um, in the Mojave. But uh, it's not to be this playthrough. The Mojave Territories have conquered this. They're basically an extension of the New California Republic. And this bright spark in the wasteland grows brighter in the West. For our part, we've done a few technological developments. In particular, we moved down our automated warfare tree. So we're now doing dynamic tactics integration, which will give us a little bit of defense, a little bit of max speed. I'm also working down the tribal doctrine for more political power and also infantry soft attack, infantry hard attack, recovery rate. Infantry is going to be really important to us and it's worth getting these bonuses, I think, from the tribal tech tree. Um, so I will do that. I'm not going to prioritize piercing early on, but that's a nice ability right there. The tribal tech tree is pretty good. It's usually balanced by the fact that you can't have high-tech weapons and things, but you have good tactics and troops. Well, we're going to have high-tech high uh, equipment. We're going to have good tactics. We're going to have good advisors. And soon, we're going to have the assistance from Hecate. I used my caps to reduce the political power of a, stuff, a bunch of stuff that I was doing um, to help economize that had uh, some good scavenging events which reduced costs further, which was good, and we're about to get assistance from Hecate firing. Great. So, with that having happened, we've got five additional divisions. So we've gone from starting with, I think, six divisions to 16, and the Daughters of Hecate template, it's just a seven subunit um, infantry division. We might want to spend... It's a 20 width. That's nifty. 
Daughters of Hecate is a 369, is a 20 combat width unit. So we might want to put. Let's throw Demolitions on there, which we can afford, and soon we'll be able to afford something else as well. Yep, yeah, we've still got um, we've still got Demolitions equipment, and we've added Dynamite, so those divisions are going to have some punch. I think what I'd like to add is if I can also get... It's probably not as much of a difference, relatively speaking, on our heavy robot divisions that are really going to be our line breakers. So that's good. We've got... Uh, infantry equipment, we have divisions. Now, what's holding us back from recruiting a bunch of the divisions? Not much, I don't think. Yeah, we can do that. Which means, what will be holding us, holding us back next? That'll be manpower. So, do I want to go for the free manpower early? And give up this 15% defense for 120 days in order to get more divisions out? I think just getting more manpower in the field might be the way to go. The alternative is going and getting um, all this manpower over here too, and that gets us DNA samples. So DNA, DNA, DNA over here. We need guerrilla tactics for that. Infantry technology, war support. Ooh... I think it's got to be the fields and then wasteland Amazons with Assess the Tribes in the middle. We're not doing anything with our high-tech area at the moment. I'm just getting bodies. I'm getting bodies so I can put guns in their hands, um, building up some army experience so that I can actually equip these divisions, and then we're going to try and fight these um, Circle Junction to our north before anything further goes wrong. How are we going? Let's go up to Military Academy Training. So that's now a source of division organization and fit minus 15% justify war goal time. How long is left on this war justification? Well, it doesn't update post facto. So September, Lanius has just gone to war with the executives. Unfortunate. He'll clean them up pretty quickly, but the point is he's running out of alternative wars that he can be fighting which is unfortunate, but we're going to cross our fingers and hope we can get our war in first. See you shortly. Okay, so two interesting things here. Firstly, technology, yay. Secondly, Warden actually won. So there is now an AI that has taken over the Hangdogs area now um, and is ruling. That's interesting for what we choose to do in the future. I'm not sure if there are special interactions between uh, Twin Mothers and Warden eventually. Um probably going to still have to fight them at some point. But um, I've never seen that happen before. I've always seen Warden lose to the Hangdogs, lose to the gang. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. We're going to look at that. That's not a, a human mind in an AI. It's just a flat AI that was designed for riot and order control, and it's won the war against the gang that it woke up to find occupying its territory. So... That's interesting. It's going to go down the Hello America band. It's going to get a whole bunch of workshops, um, boost its economy, and then hopefully eventually we can absorb it. We'll see. But um, this is probably the preferable outcome to it being the Hangdogs, although it may make it a little bit more challenging if we eventually need to absorb it because we can't just leave... Um, I'm not sure how we'll feel about leaving that there in the long run. Although we may get completely smashed and this may be beside the point. The other thing I'm going to do is switch from Wasteland Economy to, I think, Well-Equipped Army to cut our build, increase our construction speed a lot and also reduce the consumer goods expenditure that we're currently putting out. I have built a naval base here. The naval base will allow a naval invasion... Um, into uh, Salida to allow us to get behind this this crossing point here. And hopefully the AI isn't expecting it. They very seldom are. And we'll keep moving down here and we'll teach our guys how to make IEDs because nothing ever went wrong as a result of that knowledge getting out everywhere. So our war plan's improving a little bit. We've got the extra troops, which means we've got troops that we can force the crossing with. And we can also put six divisions behind them divisions in the fallout sense. This is like a thousand men. Yes, Caesar's Legion has joined Caesar's Legion. That's an artifact of the way certain events are coded. That always happens. I have seen. And this is Lanius. Lanius continues to expand even more against the old Vault Tech executives down here. 
Awkward. Anyway, how close are we to getting our war justification done? That is September. We're in July. We're getting fairly close, and then as soon as that's justified, we can start justifying another without the malice penalty from being mid-justification. I don't think there's a huge amount that these guys can give us, like four workshops, but you know that's still a 20% increase in our economy and some territory to fall back to and a step closer to what we want to do, which is take the claim jumpers territory and then eventually absorb Black Canyon and surround the actual um, province of Paradise where our factories are all located at the moment. That's the plan anyway. Can't go into Navajo because Navajo is part of Caesar, uh, Kaisar's Legion. Scorpion Bite, the terrain here is pretty bad, so you'd want to absorb... You'd want to absorb the Claim Jumpers and Black Canyon first, and then maybe try and break Warden. And at that point, you're a big boss of the North. But um, it's a bit of a big ask, given our current situation. I have done the right thing. I was doing something stupid before. I've deleted all those 10-width divisions that I was training, and now we're training 20-widths. And we're just going to work on this Daughters of Hecate template, and later on, we'll fix the Wasteland Amazons. Ah, good, more. I'm spending my caps on upgrading my decryption because I want the decryption bonus against Lanius. I mean, it's not going well, but the faster we go, the faster we go. Having a reveal intel bonus against Lanius at the right time would be great. Thank you for finishing that focus. That just feels my massive, continuous, ongoing need for manpower. And once I get Wasteland Amazons, I should get an upgrade on my infantry tech. Can't be too soon. Oh, well, there's another one. Vault City. Vault City doesn't normally lose, but they are being overrun by the Cyclops tribe. So, Vault City... Oh, they've been taken over by Brain. Okay, so Vault City got taken over in a coup um, by... A mutant, uh, then declared war on the Cyclops tribe, who they normally beat up, but because they were weakened by the coup, presumably, um, they're now being completely overrun. So, goodbye, Vault City. We all remember you from Fallout 1 and 2. Uh, it was not to be, apparently. Okay, invasion declared. Patrols out. Let's go, shall we? Hello, sir. Let's do it, guys. They say, if you want peace, prepare for war. But I think if you want peace in this, you go to war repeatedly and early to take other people's resources in order to be in a better position. There's no VPs there, so all this stuff can rush, rush that way. And these divisions can just help that crossing happen. Let's get some frontage, get everyone across. What do we what do we bypass with the goddess's influence? Oh, we just unlocked some stuff down here. We'll worry about that later. Had a decent meal in weeks. Let's get across the let's get across the straits and everything before their extra troops can come down. This division here should be encircled, which will allow us to go about our business. Come on, boys. Yep. We're across. Hello. You're not going to stop us now. Hey there. Or, like, you might, but once everyone else comes Sir. aboard, uh, we will be fine. This division here is almost broken, and we're getting the army XP we need. This will be over. And what we'll do is we'll add frontage there with an offensive line to Circle Junction. And we'll reassign divisions there as soon as we can. Let's complete the encirclement here. We finished soft occupation just in time, which will be great. Let's get recovery for infantry. We're about to finish dynamic tactics, which would have been good before the war. Oh, we should be. Let's justify 170 days. To allow us to keep moving this way. Okay, so now what can happen is every division can reassign to that. Every division can assign to that. And I can just manual order 
two of these divisions. What's up? Just ordinary infantry, please, to complete these borders Sir? up here so the AI doesn't get confused. Our divisions should be far superior to theirs. Ooh, okay, quantity or quality. So army supply usage, cell usage, army ro so robot breakthrough and soft attack, army hardness and armor versus infantry defense and attrition, robot cell output, factory output 10%, robot cell usage. Oh, are we still running time? Whoops. Must have looked like a bit of a noob there. Defense factory output. So there's 20% factory output in that side, but there's 5% hardness and 10% armor on that side. So this is unambiguous. I think that automated distribution is unambiguously better than field maintenance. Rushed production, 10% factory output versus breakthrough, soft attack, hard attack. I think I want to go quality. I think I want the hardness and the armor, the breakthrough, the soft attack, the hard attack. Even though I know 20% factory output's huge, I think just thematically, I want quality. I think. But the decision is made now. Do I need to do any of these? I don't think so. Nope, I'm happy. I'm happy not doing any of those events for the moment. What's up? What's up? Um, you guys should pick a fight there. Like, come on. Had a decent meal in weeks. And you're, while they're locked, going to go for the encirclement. Take this. Mutant armies of the Troll Warren have killed the Marrow Drinkers. Oh, have fallen to the Marrow Drinkers. Another major power gone. So Troll Warren is a super mutant power in the northwest. They're usually pretty strong. And they're falling to another tribe, the Marrow Drinkers, Mesmeralda, who I'm pretty sure is just... Oh no, she's got a full focus tree. So there you go. That's another new nation that I need to look at at some point. The Marrow Drinkers. They've got a cannibalism thing going on, I think. Um, anyway, they've taken the actual Troll Warren. Maybe that means they're going to actually win that war, which would be interesting. More divisions coming online. How many more? Oh, look at that. 23 divisions and a lot more 20 wits, and we've got some heavy robots. Life is good. Let's kill these dang tribals, eh? Your god demands it. Because she wants to run a utopic uh, post apocalyptic country with healthcare and schools and stuff, but to get there, we're gonna have to shoot some people. With our army made up of bow and arrow users and attack robots. It's like a Civ game. We've lost six men so far, by the way. They've lost 321. That amphibious invasion at the start really, really tipped the scales. Which is good. So what's going to happen now is we're going to break this province back here. Where are my heavy breakthrough robots? What's up? I want the goddess's reach. Because hopefully, if the robots can get in on that fight, we're in for we're in for a good time. Let's keep our industry going. We'll need basic tools, and we've got minor a minor air superiority problem. That's telling me that I should probably research, start researching aircraft at some point. Or oh, we'll, we'll need them against Lanius. Anyway, we'll be back shortly. All right, so I've gone back over to the nursery. Um, on the focus tree. The reason I've done this is because we've got the DNA we need. Turns out you don't need all of them, you just need some of them. So, And I've got some of them now. So I can go nursery, repository, and collecting specimens for a research slot. And I think that's a great idea. Um, so this just reminds us that the nursery is a miracle of pre-war engineering, self-contained, balanced ecological system set deep within a canyon. A um, lot of flora and fauna stored. It's where Diana lives, so it's where our main computer system exists, and she projects herself into Vault 29. Um, this reminds us that it is secret in the Black Canyon Raider territory, and it is basically the font of a lot of our industrial and resource power, which is represented through a combination of off-map factories um, and off-map resources. So we're going to go repository, which is the place where we store all of the DNA. And mission complete. Take all states, end turn, done just as our supply situation was starting to get critical as well. So, Twin Mothers has expanded a little bit. It's not going to do a huge amount for our manpower or whatnot just yet. Eventually, we're going to be able to terraform this. 
uh, core it, make some good use out of it. But for the moment, we're more concerned with um, getting the army retrained and positioned okay. for another war if we can get one in before Lanius uh, causes us trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off a bunch of divisions uh, and put them to training okay. mode. I'm going to get the others and I'm going to front line them and get planning bonus up front here. And I think the breakthrough here is going to be a little more difficult than it was before because we're not going to be able to pull that amphibious assault and they've just got more manpower in general. Um, like 4 to 10 units is the estimate. They're probably pretty shit. But what we'll do is before the actual war starts, we'll rotate in more robots and special forces and we'll rotate out the, the worst stuff. Twin Mothers gains war goal on Foragers' core territory. Okay. So here is what I think is happening. There is probably an event later on that causes that has these tribes up north give you shit, and as a result, you go to war with them. And when you go to war with them, you find out, oh no, these people have already been shipped off. Well... Uh, apparently, we've triggered it early. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to kill the foragers, because I now have a war goal against them. And training divisions over here can be the ones who have assigned front line and plan against these guys. Although, I probably don't need to do that just yet. Let's put them into area defense, where they're not going to suck up a bunch of supplies and bring them north if I have to, because my supply problems are real at this moment but that's nifty uh surprise surprise war goal and i see you there i see you there have a division just to keep that that part of the front static hey there. Oof. okay so war number one done Relatively short. We've got another war goal. We'll declare it. Let's just see when it lapses. Expires if... Apparently it doesn't expire. Let's save just in case it expires. Um, as soon as our troops are in, prepared, have orged up, and we have a little bit of planning bonus, I think we just go straight in and take the foragers. And then hopefully our um, justify lands on the claim jumpers, and we can take them too. Sir. Um, I'll move these guys into position probably in January or February. Um when things are a little more reasonable, because I think it's a March timeline for our Justify on that one. And hopefully, if Lanius is expecting to be fighting a relatively small weak Twin Mothers, um, we're going to have, I hope, some decent numbers to fight the damn guy. Because how many units is he is he rocking? He'll, he'll outnumber us. Yeah, 20 to 45. And we have 25. So we're not horribly outnumbered at this point. I'm hoping we can go with some more, get some more tech and be in a good position. What is your evaluation? Inferior enemy, division still preparing, divisions not in position. Well, divisions are about to be in position, aren't they? You still have a critical supply problem, do you? Hey. All these divisions that are currently eating supplies need to go live somewhere else. Hello. And you need to go live over there. Um, mind you, this is still just going to be a bottleneck, so I think we're just going to have supply problems regardless. Okay, give me a second to make sure my organization's right, and then I think we're going to war. Oh yeah, these guys are just falling apart. We've got pockets, we've got breakthroughs. Like, life is good. I've already destroyed some divisions in an encirclement. This war is a slaughter, which is good news, because it means that we're not going to be off schedule for going out up, uh, up north. And we have free military factories, which probably means, at this stage, more robots. More, more robots. Because I want to make my manpower go further, and also my robots are still by far my most dangerous breakthrough units. Them and my special forces. Who probably needs... Oh, there we go. Foragers. That war lasted like... That lasted no time at all. And we got like 1,100 equipment out of the damn thing. Which is probably enough to equip pretty much everyone. Hello. That's really good. So your training... Um, the supply problem is temporarily solved. Uh, in the new year, what will happen is we will deploy up and start planning. We now have two fronts, so we can put some divisions over here, some divisions over here. So, and Lanius isn't justifying on us yet. He is doing Colour at Red. Colour at Red will give him the ability 
to declare war on a bunch of people, including us. One of the focuses, so he can take all of these along here because he's got today New Mexico completed. So he can do some industry development, training. He's got a whole bunch of options, but one of them is us, the false goddess, which will give us an 80 day countdown. But I'm kind of happy with the strategy so far. We've modernized our government. We've got a little more warlike. We've uh, invaded some people. We've upgraded the economy, certainly. Um, when world tension hits 60%, we'll probably go every cap for the army. And then there's you know a few more things we can do, but we're getting there. Our manpower is good. Political power is looking very solid, which means I might even look into coring some states once we have... Um, it's called terraforming for the Twin Mothers. I haven't got any terraforming bonuses unlocked yet, but it's worth looking into because these states, some of these are pretty cheap to core. They're not very good, but they're cheap to core. Um, what can happen is if I get some of these paintbrush for the waste, um, you get these coring dice. And the coring dice give you the chance to put extra resources in provinces when you terraform them, depending on the RNG basically. Um, it's really nifty. It's really cool. It represents her making the wasteland a better place. It's not like Gek level. Gek level comes later, but it's certainly improving the quality of the ecology in the wasteland to enable better human habitation and also just recovery. I'm going to let us complete repository then as I complete my final reflections so that you can see me pick my next focus. Raiders demand tributes. Hounds of day. Yes, this is a tragedy. Um, I am going to, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I think I can just put like a division here and put off these raiders, so we'll, we'll reject their demands. So Hecate, who sent us a bunch of troops, has an has a event, well, not an event, it's a focus tree. Um, either Hecate can hold on um, and eventually join us against the Legion, if we stand, as we have. So we would have got an opportunity to join their faction with uh, Lunar Sisters together at last, the original Hounds of Hecate. Um, she can create a faction. Instead, there's this other guy who can take over, who has taken over, uh, Jordan Day, who's got some decent bonuses to him anyway. But he gets, instead, a bunch of war goals. So he can attack Warden, which he, which he will. I think he's a former Hound. Yeah, he's a former hangdog. So he can attack Warden, which is horrible. And then eventually he can get war goals on um, surrounding powers and eventually everything in Colorado, which would put him in direct conflict with us. So eventually, Hounds of Day may get a war goal with us. And if we're not solved, the, if we haven't solved the Lanius problem by then, then we're in extra trouble because our retreat location could be taken over by him. Our retreat location is here in Paradise, which would immediately cause us to border Hounds of Day and be in really big shit. So if I was to evaluate where we're at right now, um, we've done really well in the opening. The army's come online. We've got some better templates. We're upgrading. We've got a little bit of experience now, so we'll add some support companies, which I have to research. But Demolitions is a good start. Um, we'll add a couple of more. Uh, quality of the army is there with the 20 wits and the robots, and we're making more robots. We've annexed a good chunk of territory, which will give us just a few more factories, a little more manpower, not much. For the most part, our economy has just been built out and focus-based. We'll take, um, we've taken two nations. We'll take another, another tribe relatively shortly, and then we'll immediately justify on Black Canyon and try and create this sort of niched out, not niche, but wedged against the edge of the map country that Linus has to attack into. And then the question is, how do we fight and can we beat Lanius? And my strategy, which I've taken directly from just about every Dominions game I've ever played, is I'm actually trying to out-macro the guy um, through early expansion and my industry and my tech choices. I'm trying to out-macro Lanius. Then hopefully we beat him down, we take his territory. And if we do that, we'll be geographically large, but we'll be able to start like considering defending ourselves against the big boys in the region. Kaisar's Legion, if they come north, uh, Edrocito Mexicano, which is Santa Ana, uh, Texan Brotherhood. There are some big players in our region. We're still a very small fry with our 22 factories and our 858 spare manpower. Um, there's, only, there's less than 100,000 people in our tribe. There's less than 100,000 people populating in this area. There are millions, millions in the New California Republic and Kaisar's Legion. So, humble beginning. We're doing well, but we've got a long way to go. I hope you appreciate 
the the track that we're on. Thank you for putting me down this the the more difficult of the trees. On reflection, I think it's actually a good idea because we'll get some really good challenges. Um, in particular, the fight against Lanius, but also because you're not part of Kaisar's Legion, um, unlike with the the Lanius path, eventually we're going to have to fight Kaisar's Legion. And if we beat Kaisar's Legion, there's all sort of other major powers that'll be coming after us as well, um, like. Thalarlok will pass away at some point. Lots of cool threats on the horizon. Or we may just die to Lanius and then have to fight in this territory to hold off the Hounds of Day now that our friend Hakate has been removed. Anyway, hope you love this mod. Happy to take your comments. What would you like me to do next after I complete my initial goal of killing the Claim Jumpers and then maybe going for Black Canyon? Are there any particular technological or diplomatic developments you want to see or strategies you want to... Um, have me look into? Do you want me to explore parts of the focus tree? I'm open. I'm just playing this for fun and sharing it with you as I go. So thanks everyone for joining me and I'll see you next time.